Hello and welcome to the Georgia Virtual College Fair. To everyone in the audience, a couple of quick announcements before we get started with our first institution. First announcement is uh, you can type your questions to our representatives at any time. Feel free to use the Q&A button on your screen. Also know that your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Also, uh, be sure you've, we've got one more session that's happening this evening after this one. So be sure to sign up on that same website when you sign up for this one. Also, uh, this session and all of our sessions are being recorded. So you can find a recording of all of them, all the recordings in about a week at that same website, gaprobe.org. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our first uh, representative here from the Art Academy of Cincinnati. Take it away. All right, let's see here. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jack Wirth. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions for the Art Academy of Cincinnati. Six minutes, boy, I tell you, not the most time to give you everything and everything that you could possibly need to know about our college, but I'm gonna hit some key highlights for you. The first and most awesome fact being that just last year we celebrated our 150th year as a private nonprofit college of art and design offering accredited degrees such as the Associates of Science and Graphic Design, most popularly the Bachelor's Degree of Fine Art. And then we also have a Master's in Art Education as well. So we're an urban campus located right in the heart of downtown Cincinnati, Ohio in a neighborhood called Over the Rhine. And we're a total student population of just about 200, which is relatively small, but we like that because it allows for an eight to one student to faculty ratio. At the Art Academy of Cincinnati, we are the new generation of boundary breakers, the imaginative radicals who are changing the face of art and design and creative writing as we know it. The creative entrepreneurs who are redefining culture, the luminous visionaries who are creating a newer, brighter, more radiant world. So with that in mind, I mentioned that we're offering several accredited degrees, but the Bachelor's of Fine Arts being the most popular, as you can see on the left here, you'll see the different major and minor opportunities that students have. So majors being things like creative writing, design, illustration, drawing and painting, sculpture, print media, and photography. One thing to take away with you today is that at the Art Academy of Cincinnati, we're offering a transdisciplinary approach to the BFA and to all of our degrees, which means that you have the flexibility to take studio classes and liberal arts classes outside of your majors. And that's something that you're often not seeing at several colleges of art and design. And it's something that we do because right away we want our students to be able to grow a tool belt of skills so that they can get the most out of our curriculum. Our spacious facilities are open 24 seven to our students, giving them access to their own studio spaces, as well as the facilities that are on campus, including things like the plaster studio, print labs, design labs, the wood shop, anything that you would need to be able to access your creative vision. And as I mentioned too, we're located right in the heart of downtown Cincinnati. So it's very common for the classroom to radiate outwards. We want our students to be engaged with the city where they can find all the different creative opportunities happening just right outside of the front doors of our campus. Something that you might hear in the arts, you know, is this unfortunate dying, thankfully, stigma that you might be a starving artist if you pursue this degree, and that is absolutely just not the case. So through client-based projects and internship opportunities that are facilitated by us, as well as study abroad opp opportunities, our students are getting real world experience as class time. So these are just a few examples of internships that students have pursued while being a student and eventually creative professional um, career paths for them down the road as well too. And lastly, I'm going to give you some portfolio advice and some tips before leading into what our actual application process looks like. So some colleges of art and design require a portfolio of artwork, creative writing or design as part of the application process, and we do too. And students, you may be seeing that every school might be looking for a little bit different of things, you know, and for us, here's just some tips, some things to keep in mind as you're assembling your best work. And you know, that last bullet point is really hitting more than anything what you need to know, which is to go with quality over quantity, choose your best work, and know that a portfolio review does not have to be intimidating. It's something that more than anything is just a conversation with an admissions professional to give you feedback and help with the work that you're making. With that in mind, 
Every single student that is accepted to the college receives an entrance scholarship, and this scholarship opportunity is largely determined by your portfolio. So we'll help you get there, and we'll help you understand what both the entrance scholarship and tuition promise looks like. The tuition promise being that we are the only nonprofit private college in the state of Ohio offering this promise that locks you in at a tuition rate the first year throughout all three years of study. And so here's our application process. It's these three simple steps. We will be here throughout the rest of the day to answer any questions in the chat, but you can also find us on our website where you can learn anything and everything that you would need to know. Again, this is Jack in admissions at the Art Academy of Cincinnati. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jack. All right, perfect. So next we're gonna move on to Berea College. Morgan, take it away. And also just a quick reminder to all of our students in the audience, feel free to use the Q&A button to type your questions to any of the uh, institutions and representatives that are on the session right now. Hi guys, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk with you tonight about Berea. Since we only have six minutes, I'm gonna structure this in six things you need to know about Berea College. Number one, we are the number one bang for your buck school. This is a ranking that we've gotten many times over the years. We do this in a number of ways, but the first and most prominent being our no tuition promise scholarship. That's right, we will promise you every student that's accepted that you will not pay a dime of tuition for your entire four years with us. The scholarships uh, valued at almost $176,000 over the current course of your four years. Um, and because of this, almost half of our graduates graduate completely debt free. Um, those who do take debt only take about $5,500 and that typically comes from study abroad opportunities. Number two, you can earn $2,000 with us your very first year. We are one of eight federally recognized work study programs in the US, meaning every student works 10 to 12 hours on week in a department that's vital to campus operations. Because of this, you're really going to feel a sense of community because you're working for the college, you're working with your peers, and you're creating a community of your own every single day. Through our work program, you gain career prep, mentoring and practical skills that are going to prepare you post-graduation. You're going to have four years of soft skills and hard skills in the work industry on top of interviewing skills, getting rid of those interview jitters, and we even give funding for professional clothing post-graduation. Number three, this is one that I'm super proud of seeing as I'm a Berea graduate. We were recently ranked the number three best liberal arts school in the U.S. Um, we do this because we have over 60 areas of study. Um, we have in availability for independent minors and majors as well as if your um, interests aren't necessarily represented on campus. Um, we have a small uh, student body with a large faculty pool, meaning you're going to get to know your faculty, you're going to get to know your peers, and they're going to know your name, they're going to know how to help you post-graduation and really start creating those relationships to help you succeed. Another thing we do is we offer undergraduate research. It's not uncommon for a Berea student to graduate with published research at the undergraduate level, y'all. This is a big deal because a lot of times that's not available until graduate school. We also offer funding for conferences all across the U.S. I myself went to multiple. I went to ones in Texas, in Virginia, West Virginia, and I never paid a dime for any of it. And it really looked great on my resume when I was post-grad. We also recognize that our promise to you doesn't end after four years. Because of that, we promise you that we will give you funding for your GRE, your LSAT, your MCAT, any of those post-graduation graduation tests. Um, and we also will provide funding for you to go visit the schools of your choice. We want you to make Berea look great post-grad and we want to commit to you for your education. Number four. You have four years of opportunity with us. So in those four years, you could study abroad. Um, you can get 
it internally funded through Berea up to 75%, which means you have very little to get covered by outside scholarships. And it makes it to where almost half of our student body are able to go study abroad, whereas the national average is only about 10%. We also provide two funded internships anywhere in the world. You just have to get accepted to the program and we even have a whole office dedicated to helping you find those internships. We also are dedicated to helping you learn through service if that's something you're interested in. We have programs that help you go out and meet the community. You know, you can mentor children in the Berea community. You can spend spring break building houses. If service is something that's important to you, we've got you covered. Five notable alumni. Dr. Carter G. Woodson, the father of Black History Month. This is something we're really proud of because Berea was the first co-ed, co-racial school in the South. Um, this mission for equality in education still lives on today and you can see it in how we operate. Uh, C.E. Morgan, an amazing author. Dr. Samuel Hurst, the inventor of touchscreen technology. If you have a smartphone, think a Berea graduate. Akila Hughes, um, a writer, comedian, YouTuber. She's super great and she's a Berea grad. And Dr. John Fenn, who won a Nobel Prize. We also have his Nobel Prize on display and anybody can come see it in our STEM building. So when you come to Berea, you can come see it. And there are six steps between you and Berea. We need your online application. It's free. It only, caught, it only takes about eight minutes. It's free. And so there's no binding tuition there. Um, your high school transcript, your counselor evaluation form, we are test score optional this year, and your teacher recommendation form along with your FAFSA. Get everything into us by October 31st and you'll have your answer on whether or not you've been accepted before we break for Christmas. Thank you so much for your time everybody. I really look forward to seeing your applications in my pool and feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much, Morgan. All right, moving right along then. We, next, we'll hear from Florida International University. Again, a reminder to any of our students, feel free to type your questions to our panelists, to our representatives at any point in time using the Q&A button on your screen. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jahara Graham. I am the Assistant Director of FIU, Florida International University. Um, we are Miami's only public research institution. So yes, we're located in Miami, Florida. Uh, we are the fourth largest public research institution um, in the country. So we're a pretty large university. We have over 200 undergraduate majors to choose from and we'll talk about some of those colleges and schools um, later. So everything from bachelor's degrees all the way up to doctoral programs. So we do have a college of medicine as well as a college of law. Um, tier one research institution, we are D1 when it comes to sports. So we have 18 division one sports to choose from. Um, and then of course, over 250 clubs and organizations, Greek life, anything you're looking for, um, we have it. All right, so some of the colleges and schools, you have the College of Art, Sciences and Education. This is the biggest one. Um, the picture that you see here is one of our mock trial rooms that our College of Law students will use. So that's pretty cool. College of Business is pretty much a staple for FIU. Um, our international business program is ranked number two in the nation. So we're very proud of that. Uh, College of Communication, Architecture, and the Arts, really fun. Uh, what you see there is the annual walk on water. So these are our architecture students and they have to design these like flotation devices uh, to walk across a lake at the university. And the first one across uh, gets a scholarship and some don't make it. So yes, they do fall into the water and it's just pretty entertaining to watch. It's a good time. College of Engineering and Computing uh, is there. What you see is the wall of wind. So of course, being in Miami, a lot of people worry about hurricanes. So this simulates up to a category five hurricane. So uh, we work with um, national, or national meteorologists, hurricane centers, um, and also architecture students can put things in front of this structure to see what can withstand um, hurricanes. 
uh, SIPA, School of International Public Affairs. International is literally our middle name. So we do a lot hosting dignitaries. Uh, Model UN is uh, usually ranked number one or two. So we're very proud of them and they host a lot of things over there. Hospitality. Um, what you see here is our restaurant on campus is completely student run um, from the menu all the way up to the operations and even the chefs cooking. So that's really fun to visit. Um, here are a few more. Nursing is very, very popular as well as the College of Medicine. Um, so we do have our simulation lab, our star lab. So those dummies that you see, they breed, sweat, give birth. They do everything that people would do. So it's a very hands-on experience. Obviously, the College of Law, again, um, and the Honors College, which is interdisciplinary uh, across all majors. So housing, it is not required for freshman students to live on campus. That's important to note. And yes, freshman students can bring your car um, the first year. So that's always important as well to our students. This is one of our residence halls. They're all apartment or suite style. So there's no hall bathrooms or anything like that. And they come with a lot of utilities. Um, students are also able to use, um, they come with a meal plan. So you can use your Panther Bucks and everything at one of the over 30 restaurants that we have on campus. So we promise that you will not be hungry while you're at FIU. Um, so what do you need to apply? You can apply today. The application opens every year, July 1st. So that's the um, summer between your junior and senior year. These are the deadlines. It's very simple, fully online application, $30 application fee, or we do accept fee waivers, submit your test scores, um, and yes, we super score, and then your transcripts, and we're looking at your weighted GPA. All right, so that's important to keep in mind. There's no essays, no letters of recommendation. You apply online and we've already started releasing decisions. So we are working on rolling admissions. Decisions are already coming out, so be on the lookout for those. So lastly, um, this is just the contact information for the Office of Admissions. That's our general phone number. Um, our email is there, admiss at fiu.edu. My personal email is there. Please feel free to email me with any questions. We're uh, not currently hosting on-campus visits, but we do have a lot of virtual tours online, um, as well as housing tours. We're having our fall showcase. That is actually next week, so that's a week long of events. So you can register for everything on the go.fiu.edu slash visit account. And of course, get social. Uh, we are on Instagram. You can follow my recruiter page. Um, I post a lot of things about FIU, obviously, um, but feel free to go on there, the general FIU Instagram page, and then join FIU, which is run by our tour guides. Uh, so those are current students at the university, and they answer any questions that you may have um, from a student's perspective. So if you don't want to hear us, but we do go live every Friday. Um, the admissions uh, representative. So feel free to hop on, ask any questions that you have, and we will answer them. But thank you all. We'll be here um, answering the questions in the Q&A, and I will see you later. Thank you. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Next up on our agenda, uh, we'd love to hear from Mercer University. Hello, hello. Well, um, uh, let me just say it is a, a real privilege to be here um, with you all this evening. Um, I am a Mercer graduate myself. My name is Bo Walker. I'm one of our admissions counselors here uh, at Mercer University and I'm also a lifelong Macon resident. So I'm always super excited to share a little bit about what makes Mercer so unique. And tonight, the things that I really want to share um, with you are um, our passion for research, service, uh, and then our diverse student body. Um, so we do, um, Mercer University, first of all, we are a, a private liberal arts university in Macon, Georgia, but we're also one that is very much a part of a much larger Mercer University family. Um, we've got a medical school, law school, uh, pharmacy school, theology school, school of education, uh, and so on. But we definitely put a very strong emphasis on research. Um, being a member of the Georgia Research Alliance, we're able to secure over $50 million a year in research funding. And we believe that is something that should be accessible um, to every student at every discipline, uh, in every discipline and at every level. 
Um, it's not just for STEM fields, although certainly let's get real, there is a lot of research to be done uh, in the STEM related fields. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to bore you with my own personal story, but I do love to talk about how I, as a creative writing major, got to spend two years doing extremely meaningful um, research experiences that are probably one of the things that I'm the most proud of from my time here um, at Mercer. Um, our average class size is around 22 students, so this allows our students to forge truly meaningful connections with their professors. Our professors, 90% of them hold terminal degrees, uh, so they are as educated as anyone could be uh, in their field, and we don't use any teaching assistants or graduate um, assistants. Um, so when a student comes to class and a professor's name's on the uh, syllabus, that's who they can count on being there um, each and every time. Um, we also put a tremendous emphasis on service, and I like to think of research and service really as the core tenets at Mercer University. They're at the foundation of everything we do, and service absolutely is what we have a heart for here at Mercer. Uh, we try to give our students as many opportunities as we can, opportunities as we can to put their skills, talents, and education to use, not just in the classroom, but out in communities near and far. Some terrific examples of that would be our Mercer on Mission program. This is an opportunity for students to spend three to four weeks overseas earning course credit, but doing so in a way that benefits a foreign community in need like water purification in Uganda, medical clinics in Cambodia, elementary education in Guatemala. Um, and we subsidize all that. We'll pay for the travel, the lodging, the meals, all that a student is required to pay for to participate in one of those uh, are the course credits they're going to earn. Um, but here locally, students, um, a student initiated um, opportunity is service Saturdays where students spend their Saturday mornings instead of sleeping in or uh, goofing off. They give back to the local community here to make making Georgia a better place. Um, and so with these kind of two passions, this passion for research, this passion for service, it really has helped us to cultivate a very diverse student body here. Um, we have students that are very religious, non-religious, um, from all different races, socioeconomic backgrounds and upbringings, all working together to put their best collective feet forward to make a positive impact on the world that we all share. Um, I know it sounds corny, but it definitely is our saying. If you come to campus, you're gonna see it all over our um, all of our buildings and stuff. We believe that every student at Mercer majors in changing the world. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so uh, that's something that we believe we can help facilitate. So if you'd like more information, um, please uh, check our website, undergrad.mercer.edu. Um, we've got virtual and in-person campus visitation opportunities available, um, but you can also find your admissions counselor there on our website. We would love to talk to you um, about our opportunities, about um, any questions that you might have. Um, I did want to mention, however, quickly that we are test optional, so students um, can apply with test scores or without test scores, and our early action deadline is November 15th. So I definitely recommend students that are looking into applying to Mercer to try to get in their application and all those supplemental materials um, by or before that November 15th so that they'll be among the very first students to find out their decision uh, as well as be considered for the maximum number of scholarship opportunities. But um, it really is a pleasure to join you all today and uh, we would be excited to assist you um, with your college search. So thank you all very much for letting me be here. Great, thank you very much, Bo. So next up, our last institution before we open it up to some general Q&A is Tacoa Falls College. Take it away. Hey guys, how are you? Good. Um, so real quick, I just wanted to uh, jump into some things about Tacoa Falls College. Uh, we're located actually in Northeast Georgia um, and we are about an hour Northeast of Atlanta. Um, so just right on the border of Georgia and uh, South Carolina. Um, our main mission um, and actually our slogan is um, going to be centered on Christ change the world. Um, we're very Christ focused as a private Christian college. Um, so that's a big thing about the college that we have and is integrated in all the things here at TFC. Um, as far as how the admissions process works, uh, we'll need um, your application, a brief testimony, which is already on the application. Um, and I can actually, if you're interested, send you a promo code so you can apply for free. Um, if you want, you can just message me. Um, but 
Other than that, we really just need your high school transcripts. And this year, we're actually waiving test scores. If you haven't had the opportunity to go ahead and take one of the tests uh, just because of COVID. Um, but some good fun facts about TFC, other than us having a 186 feet tall waterfall, um, is that we have about 35 majors on campus and around 43 minors. Um, so there is a large, vast majority of different things that you can major and study in. Um, but one of the greatest things also that we offer is sports. Uh, if you're looking to play, um, you know, anything as far as soccer, basketball, volleyball, baseball, um, we would love to have you come for a free campus visit, do a workout with the coach. Um, it would just be a great time to have you here and checking out the college. Um, also, 100% of our students receive financial aid. Um, so if you are kind of worried about money going into college, uh, we would love to just take care of you here at Coe Falls College. Uh, make sure that you're receiving the aid that you need and want. Um, so yeah, if uh, you're interested, definitely we can go ahead and schedule um, a campus visit for you uh, just to talk more details about that. Um, but yeah, um, that's really all I have. Uh, I can, I can kind of jump into more details uh, if you guys want and have questions, um, but I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Great, thanks Corey. And uh, to any of the students, feel free to use the Q&A to ask questions of any of our reps at any point. I'm gonna welcome back all of the reps now. Uh, we've got a few minutes for just some final wrap up Q&A, um, especially if you have any general tips for the college application at an admissions process. Any other reps can jump in here. Hey, sorry, what was your question? Uh, so we just have a couple minutes just to talk uh, general college app admissions process. So if you have any final tips or general questions, that common questions that you may get from students, uh, we've got a couple minutes just to, to kind of wrap up here. Yeah, um, I think a common question um, and everyone else obviously can jump in, but um, is usually application process. Uh, I guess I would recommend that the student looks at whatever college they're interested in, reach out to an admissions counselor because they can do things like give them a promo code to apply for free. Um, and every college is looking for something different. So that way, if they reach out to the admissions counselor at what they're looking at for as far as college, they can kind of tell them this is what we want. Um, whereas like this college might require test scores, this one might not so forth uh, as GPA and stuff like that. That's, that's a main one that I can think of. Yeah, just to piggyback off of that, don't hesitate to reach out to your admissions people. That's what we're here for. We're here to help. We're here to walk you through every single step, every process that seems scary or daunting. It's our responsibility to help you understand it. And specifically for colleges of art and design or any college that might require a portfolio. Um, some schools are very, black and white about what they allow and know that, you know, if you just reach out for help and knowing what assembling one looks like, um, that's what we're here for. My biggest tip is visit, at least virtually, your top three choices. You can listen to our presentations all day, every day, but you won't know the college until you see it in person. Best of luck, everyone. Yes, Morgan stole what I was going to say. Exactly. Uh, I second that a thousand times. Definitely visit, visit, um, virtual visits, whatever. Um, don't just go off what people tell you or what you hear because um, you have to see if it's a right fit for you. So yes, if you can, I'm sure every college has like virtual campus tours or virtual whatever's going on. Uh, view those and if the campus is open, even better. Um, go stop by and see it just to see how you feel when you get there for sure. Um, one thing I, I might add to, to this, which is definitely connected in its own kind of way, is uh, look for opportunities to connect with current students uh, at the schools you're looking into. If they've got any sort of student panels or student Q&As or a student lunch where you can get together with students. Um, I know we as admissions professionals try our very best to stay in touch with all the happenings and goings on on our campuses. Uh, and I'd like to think we do a good job, but nobody knows what's going on on any school's campus better than their current students. So look for those opportunities and try to take advantage when and where you can. Some great advice. Thank you, everyone. 
Uh, another question would be, are there any common or any fun traditions that you guys have on your campuses that you'd love to share? I can go. So Berea actually owns thousands of acres of uh, mountain. Um, and every day, usually around mid-October, we shut everything down, cancel classes in the middle of the week, shuttle people who don't have cars out to the mountain. We do a sunrise hike to the top of the tallest one. The choir sings as the sun comes up. And then as like throughout the day, we have grilling and dance group performances. And it's just so much fun. I'll share. Um, being a College of Art and Design, um, you might not associate sports, you know, necessarily with a smaller school that's focusing on design and everything. But a while back, we started an intramural soccer team and we were not the greatest as a bunch of painters and sculptors and designers and writers. And so we lovingly titled ourselves our team name as the Art Academy Stinks. And we have since embraced our mascot as the skunk. So if you see a skunk on any of our material, it's a way for us to lovingly say that um, soccer is maybe not our game, but if you want to learn about um, contemporary art and design, we're here for that. Um, I touched on ours a little bit with the walk on water, but another like just weird quirky thing um, on campus every day at 305 because Miami. Uh, so 305 p.m. We play the fight song over all the speakers. Um, at the university. So you can hear that well mainly in the student union. So you will hear it and you will subconsciously sing it and you cannot escape it and it happens. So yes, 305 till we die. <laughs> um, one of our cool traditions that we have during our or, uh, new student orientation is uh, uh, stu new students are taken up to kind of the uh, the steeple of one of our oldest buildings on campus, the old administration building, uh, which was built in the early to mid uh, 1800s. They get to go up there and you can see all of Macon, Georgia's downtown from up there. It's like a real bird's eye view of the city. Uh, and students have been carving and writing their names on the inside of that steeple um, for years and years, probably over a hundred years of names all up the stairwell. And so students are invited to add their name to that, uh, to become a part of that tradition. So that's, that's a really cool thing we get to do um, during our orientation. Excellent. Looks like we got a couple of questions in the Q&A, if anyone wants to, uh, for Mercer and for Berea. Students, feel free to type your questions to any of our colleges in the Q&A. Any other final tips or, uh, or general, general advice you'd like to give before we wrap everything up? All right. So we'll give Bo just a couple of minutes here just to wrap up all of those final questions. Um, and to everyone else in the audience, thank you so much for, for joining us. Sure. Uh, when you close this screen, you will have a, uh, be a very quick four question survey that will appear. We'd appreciate if you can share any feedback with us. Uh, to also, uh, we, there, uh, uh, there is one more session happening later this evening in the next hour. Um, so feel free to join that, register for those sessions as well on the same website where you registered for this one. Same with uh, a video of this recording, a recording of this session and all the sessions will be available at that same gaprobe.org website as well. So on behalf of everyone here, thank you so much for joining us and have a good evening. Bye-bye.